Well, praise the Lord. Good to be with you again this week as we continue our walk through the Word. We're going to get into Ephesians chapter 4 today. And uh, God bless you. Before we get started, let's pray. Lord, I just ask you in the name of Jesus that you anoint me to speak and teach what you want spoken. Anoint those that are watching or listening, either by choice or by accident. Anoint them to receive a rhema word, a right now word that will speak into their lives. Lord, I ask that this word go out throughout all the internet and bless those that it comes into contact with. And more, most of all, I ask that Jesus be glorified. It's in his name we pray. Amen. As I say every week, if you're blessed by these, let me know. Forward them on to somebody. Pass them on to somebody you think will be blessed by them. Email me, Facebook me, tweet me. Uh, however, just let me know you're watching and you're blessed. Amen. Pastors, if you think these messages are something that would bless your body, your local congregation, I would love to hear from you. I'm available to speak. I don't charge anything. I just want to come out and preach and teach the word of God. Amen. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So today we're going to look at Ephesians uh, chapter 4. We're just going to look at three verses. It's going to be brief but informative. If you have a pen, take some notes. You might want to get some paper too. Don't write on your table. Amen. Amen. So Ephesians chapter 4. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So look to, let's look at a couple of things there. There's one body. There's not a Baptist body. There's not a Pentecostal body. If you're a born-again Catholic, it's not a Catholic body. It is one body. And as me being a member of the body, I have every right to fellowship with other members of the body. Because you attend a different, a different local congregation does not separate you and I. We are members of one body of Christ, so I can pray with you. I can fellowship with you. Because we are one body. Hallelujah. We're the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. We're not the body of the Word of Faith. We're not the body of the Pentecostal. We're not the body of the Baptist. We are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're part of the body, we're one. Amen? So, we're one body, one Lord. There's one Lord. There's not many Lords. Buddha is not Lord. Muhammad is not one of the lords. Confucius is not one of the lords. Krishna is not one of the lords. There's one Lord. One Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ. There's one Father God. That's the God of the Bible, Abraham. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. One Lord. The one body. One Lord. One faith. One faith. The only faith that God recognizes is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he's done at Calvary's cross. Faith in his word. Not faith in religion. Not faith in works. Not faith in traditions. But one faith. The only faith that will save mankind is faith in the, what Jesus Christ did at Calvary's cross. The Lord Jesus shed his blood for all mankind at the cross. And faith in that shed blood saves man. Faith in that shed blood sanctifies man. Faith in that shed blood justifies man. And that faith will get you healed. That faith will prosper you. That faith will bring you peace. Why? Because that faith brings every benefit of the cross into manifestation in the man's life. But it's one faith. There are not many varied ways. Jesus said, I am the way. Not one of many ways. I am the way. I am the truth. Not one of many truths. 
but the truth, and I am the life. Anything outside of Christ is not life. Amen. One baptism. Now, Mace, I, saw, I thought you said there are three baptisms for the believer. There are. But this is talking about salvation. And we're going to look at that in a little depth here. But there are three baptisms for the believer. One is to be baptized in the body of Christ. Be baptized in the water is number two. And to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, when one's baptized, well, let's look at it. Turn over to your left, save your place there, and turn over to your left to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Just a little bit over to your left. Verse 13. For by one Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Greek or Gentiles, whether we be bound or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit, for the body is not one member but many. So what I wanted you to see there, for by one spirit we are baptized into one body. And remember we said at the very beginning, it's the body of Christ. So the moment you're born again, the Holy Spirit baptizes you, which means in the Greek immerses you, immerses you into the body of Christ. You can't get saved without being baptized in the body of Christ. Water baptism can only be done after you're born again because it's a symbol of the death, burial, and resurrection. That's when the minister or the elder or the uh, uh, elder believer takes the newborn believer or the believer that's never been water baptized, immerses them in water, raises them back up, symbolizing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then when one is a believer, that you don't even have to be uh, water baptized for this. All you have to do is be a believer. When you're a born-again believer, you're now ready to be baptized into the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, same thing. Remember John the Baptist said he will baptize, referring to Jesus, in fire, in the Holy Ghost in fire. Yeah, let's look at that. Go to any gospel. Uh, let's look at uh, Matthew. Matthew. To just a minute to find what I'm looking for. Da, 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 da. Okay. Hang on. Just pray in the spirit there while you're looking. Okay, verse, let's just, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. John the Baptist talking about Jesus. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So the Lord Jesus Christ, to every believer that will ask and is willing to receive, he will then baptize that believer with the Holy Ghost. Well, and the initial evidence, if you read the book of Acts, the initial evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost uh, is speaking in tongues. You can't get away from it. It's in the Bible. So if you want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost, which you should because Jesus said you should, then you should expect to speak in tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. But that, the baptism here in verse 5 of uh, Ephesians 4 is talking about spirit baptism as far as the Holy Spirit baptizing you, I, anybody that comes to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, baptizing, immersing us into the body of Christ. Again, water baptism is just a physical, being physically immersed in water to symbolize to the outside world the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and being baptized in the Holy Spirit is Jesus immersing us with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Why? He said in the book of Acts, so you will have power, supernatural power to what? Witness to the world. Witness to the world about what? Jesus Christ. About Jesus Christ. 
And in order to reach this lost, sighing, dying, crying world, you and I need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with power so we can reach the world. Reach the world with the supernatural power of Jesus Christ. We need that power to combat enemy forces that are coming against us. And by that, I mean spiritual forces, demons, devils. They're coming at every believer from every angle. But you are more powerful than the devil because you have been baptized with power and fire the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And then finally in verse 6, Ephesians 4, 6, One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Think about that. The God who created the world is in you <laughs> via the Holy Ghost. Every born-again believer, the moment you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, has the Holy Spirit in measure. Now that's a different thing from being baptized with the Holy Ghost. But every believer has the Holy Ghost. Amen. God now resides in you via the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Well, I love you. I hope you got something out of this. Remember, read your Bible every day. See what the Word says about you. Go to church. Find you a good Word of faith, Spirit-filled church that's going to teach you the Word and demonstrate the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's so important. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Pray, spend time with God in prayer. Friend, I love you. And if I don't see you around town, I'll see you.